how to sell more cars. Hi, my name is Terry Lancaster. Welcome to the uh, How to Sell More Cars Town Hall. And um, I was having a conversation, another conversation on another group that I do, uh, the Nashville Association of Sales Professionals. And we were talking about the most important day on, on the marketing calendar. And uh, my, my uh, prognosis was that the most important day on the marketing calendar is your customer's birthday. It's your one chance a year to make them feel like they are the center of the world, like it is their special day. But one of, one of my guests who owns a marketing agency here in Nashville, uh, she said that September 30th uh, was the most important marketing day of the year, which was just a, a couple of days ago. And her reasoning was, well, that's the day before the fourth quarter starts. And if you ain't ready by then, you, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're, behind, uh, you're behind schedule. So it, it needs, needs to get going. So that's what I wanted to have the conversation about today. And honestly, I started doing all of this years ago just so I can have interesting conversations with interesting people. So I, I appreciate y'all be, being here with me um, to talk about this, but let's, let's look at what's going on because I, you know, I'm, I'm working with dealers everywhere from Moose Jaw to Saskatchewan to Miami, Florida every day, but you know, and it, it, everything is different for everybody everywhere. And you start looking at the headlines, you can see that. Um, looking at the headlines here, US auto sales point to uh, the demand is strong. Uh, Volkswagen sales up 12%, Ford sales up 16%, uh, Toyota reported up, up, I read differing reports on Toyota whether they were up or down, General Motors up 24% with Chevrolet up, up 30%, Tesla sales up 50%, uh, speaking of Tesla, General Motors sold more, um, sold more electric vehicles than they ever have before. The, the, the Bolt, they sold, sold a ton of those. Rivian on pace to boost their production. So uh, it looks, uh, Ford Maverick pickup, uh, uh, they're, they're selling a bunch of those. So you've got, you, it looks like demand is strong, inventory is staying strong, and, and everyone seems to be doing okay. I, I, your red inventory was basically flat. People got the, about the same amount of cars that they had, uh, they had la, uh, last, for, for the last quarter. So demand is staying strong and, and inventory is staying strong. The, the manufacturers are selling cars as fast as they can make them, which means the dealers are uh, selling cars as fast as, as they can get them on the lot for the most part. But you start digging in there a little bit and you look at the affordability issues, the average payment now up over $700, uh, average price of, of, a, of a new vehicle up 6% from last year and uh, and the buried deep in the all, all the news coming out it was the fact that uh, the used car sales nationwide were were down so news car uh, used car sales were actually down um, prices of payments are up interest rates are up there's the afford affordability problem so it's it's a little bit different everywhere and from my standpoint because I work out with a lot of dealers everywhere from a marketing standpoint, I'm getting a lot of things. And the one thing I've noticed, at least for me particularly, and, and I, that's what I want to see is if this, uh, if this jives with what you guys are, are seeing, is I'm starting to see a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen in maybe a couple of years. People are coming out of the woodwork. I got, I got dealers who I haven't done, uh, done anything with in the last several years since, uh, since you know, all, the, all the COVID pandemic stuff started. All of a sudden, they're having, they're having big sales and they need radio and, and, and TV spots. Um, I, I, I do a lot of work with a lot of dealers in Canada. So uh, snowmobile, I, was, I, did a, I did a big, loud snowmobile ad today. So I do, did that for a dealer over in the uh, in, in the mountain states. But I'm still doing a lot of work with dealers on talking about the buy, uh, on educating their their buyers about the the new the way cars are being bought now and and kind of uh, trying to try to lead people into doing what they want to do and using the ordering process that they doing a lot of ads about how to order cars. I'm still doing a lot of ads about, about buying cars, even though inventory seems to be saying strong. Dealers, uh, dealers like that fact that they can, they can get their own cars and maybe make a little bit uh, more money on that. So, so that's what I've got going on and, and, and Christmas and Christmas cards. We're, I, I talk all the time about building the, uh, the personal relationship. And this is your, uh, your big chance here over the, uh, over, over the fourth quarter to, to really submit the personal relationship with the individual salesperson and their customers and with the dealership and their customers by, by sending out Christmas cards and a dealer I had, um, well, as a matter of fact, a dealer who's uh, inviting me back down to the store to do a sales presentation. Who I haven't done a sales, uh, a sales training presentation, haven't been at their store in over a year. 
and uh, they're they're starting to you know think well okay now now it's time to to jack things back up a little bit so it seems more like a normal situation that that it has been and one of the things this this particular dealer told me is that uh, he he likes for his salespeople to send out Thanksgiving cards and that's that's one of the things I've done is send out Thanksgiving cards uh, before the big Christmas rush but if you're sending out Christmas cards be ready now. So that you can send that picture out early, that card out early, so it gets there around Thanksgiving or shortly after, and sits on their refrigerator for five or six weeks through the holidays. I, I took this same hat that I'm wearing. Uh, I took it down to the beach on my family vacation. The Christmas card we send out every year is, is a picture of me, my wife, and my, my three daughters, usually on the beach. Um, so this year I took down the uh, the Christmas hat, and in our in one of our pictures that we took on the beach, put on the Christmas hat, and everybody say cheese and the. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll have that out in the Christmas card uh, in, in the next few weeks, getting because it's time to get ready for that. Um, so that's that's what I've got going on. Does that jive with what you people are seeing? And uh, I got, oh, we've got people waiting in the waiting room. Bill Jacobs, Jason, welcome aboard the people I just let in. I was running my mouth and didn't see you hop in. Um, so uh, does that jive with what you, you guys are seeing? Clinton, what's going on in Texas? I'll tell you, Terry, it's uh, very accurate when you talk about the used car market being down, at least here. Um, uh, in, in 10 years that I've been with my store, um, I've never seen the numbers we put up last month. And, you know, by that, obviously, I mean how low. It was, uh, it was a throwaway month for sure. And um, it, we're struggling really bad in the, at the used side right now. You, uh, new cars, like you said, are doing well. Um, we're getting more inventory. I, you know, my, my dealer is a GM dealer and we're getting a new inventory. Like we haven't got it in two years. Uh, just truckloads, a couple, maybe a week. Um, and that's, that's working out well for them, but new, but uh, definitely pre-owned is suffering at the moment. Yeah. But the, the, the new cars that are coming in, you're still selling them as fast as they get off the trucks. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. So, so not, not everyone is though, because I know some brands, um, I've, one thing that is different now is I've just done for the first time in uh, first time since in, in the pre-pandemic. I've started in the last couple of months doing a uh, big old radio and TV ads that say save ten thousand dollars on a brand new truck. I haven't I haven't used the save ten thousand dollar line in a long, long time. So some folks are, are starting to, to discount where there, was, there hasn't been any discount for for a long time. I'll tell you, um, our new our new car side, we're not discounting. We're they've put out a few small rebates. Obviously, the customer gets that, uh, but it's sticker minus rebates for us, and they're still moving. They're still moving really good now. What we don't have anymore is market adjustments. We've gotten rid of that whole idea. So, um, with with the inventory coming up and having some competition now, like you said, some dealers are still discounting it, but we're not. Yeah. The, the, well, that, that $10,000 truck, that was, that was a Ram. You're going to save $10,000 on a Ram. They've, they've <laughs> always had, they've always had the biggest, the, the, the biggest chunk like that. Um, but um, yeah, are, 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 are there other dealers in the market still using the, uh, the market uh, adjustments? Have you, have you got, is that a selling point for you that we're not marking them up? Not so much. Um, yeah. Pretty much everybody in my general area within a 250 mile radius of our store has dropped that. Yeah. Drop that practice off. William, what's what's happening in in West Virginia? Now you're you're still on mute, brother. There we go. There we go. Uh, from my perspective, I've just been told that because uh, we use an AI to scan the web for pricing and make sure that we're, our our prices are never the highest, never the lowest, uh, so we can fly somewhere in the middle of the radar and get more visibility, but. Um, everything's starting to adjust back a little bit to pre-COVID as far as trade values and so forth. So we're going to um, watch that. However, I, I just, I'm kind of curious with everything that just happened with the hurricane, if maybe that is just very short lived and everything rises back up with having to replace millions of cars in the South. So. Right. Yeah. I think that's going to be in that. I, 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 one thing I haven't heard is I know some of the dealers that got hit pretty pretty hard down in in Florida, um, but I haven't heard any 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 major assessment of how how many vehicles were destroyed in that. So that's uh, that's going to be well, Liz, you're in Miami, is that right? So can you, would you mind popping on? Tell us what it looks like down there. What your dealers are seeing? Well, the hurricane hit in Fort Myers. Yes. So we're like about three hours, four hours away. 
in our area, it didn't hit Miami. It didn't hit like maybe an hour of no electricity. Other than that, the Ian didn't affect us at all. In Miami and Fort, in Fort Myers, it did. It still is, there are still people without electricity and so forth. So the numbers of, you know, how much, how many vehicles are underwater and all that, I don't know. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, I, 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 I do know there are some dealers, I believe there are some dealers in Fort Myers that, that, are, that are still closed. Adam, uh, Adam Thrasher just hopped in. Uh, so I don't know, uh, I don't know if he can get to his camera. If, uh, if you can, Adam, go ahead and, uh, cause he, I talked to him earlier today and he's in Orlando. Tell us what, tell us what Orlando looks like right now. Hey buddy, I don't have a camera, but, uh, Orlando is looking pretty good. Uh, we're down at Disney for the week for fall break. And, uh, for, for what you can see in, in this area, uh, it, it looks okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, and he, he said, he said, Disney is good to go. It's uh, they, they, they cleaned up, got everything going and, and got the gates turning again, ASAP. Yeah. It's, it's areas like St. Augustine and, and out on, on the coastline that, that actually kind of, um, seem to have gotten the worst of it. So it's- well, and, and, and uh, Dave Clayton, a buddy of mine who's in here some, uh, he's on uh, Pauly's Island, South Carolina. And Pauly's Island, South Carolina was one of the places got hit. They, I mean, it's, you know, level. They, they took, took the dock away. Um, so so it, it's, it's, it's rough all over. So I think William's right. That's going to affect, uh, not going to affect the demand. Well, it's going to increase the demand because there, there are cars that are going to be, uh, it's going to, going to push that up. So it's interesting to see that. What are you guys doing to, to keep the wheels on the bus, to keep team rolling, to keep the folks coming in? Mark Easter just popped in. I don't get to see Mark. Mark, what's going on in, in Missouri? How are you guys doing up there? And how are you uh, How are you getting ready for fourth quarter? Good question. Um, on all seriousness, uh, it's been three dead days here this first of October. Um, and we're, well, talking with our three managers, we, I don't want to say we don't have a plan, but we've been, we were strong on the internet. We're strong on our BDC. We're strong on our uh, email blast, everything else. And it's just not working right now. So they're going to be, they're talking. They, but I don't, I don't, I have a, our inventory is decent. We've got, we have 30 new cars. We usually carry 150 new. We have about, we keep about a hundred, hundred to 125 views at all times anyway. And they've been turning very well. Yeah. Uh, buying them off the street. I bought three already this month. So that's what I'm doing. Good to talk to you, by the way. <clears throat> good to see. Good to see you, brother. Uh, it's, uh, we should, we get back down to Nashville. Let's go eat some, eat some more fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Baptist boy here will always eat fried chicken. You know that. That's right. So, uh, well, Mark, you know the old joke: why you, why you, uh, you, you can't take a if you take Baptist fishing, you have to take two, right? You yeah, take that's one. true. Yeah, if you, you only take, you take one, you'll drink one, all your beer. Yeah, drive. You got to take two. <laughs> Just, or eat uh, all your fried chicken. So um, uh, I'm not sure. We got Chuck. If, if that's Chuck Morelli, uh, I always like to hear from Chuck. Uh, you can hop on and tell us what uh, what everything is looking like in, in Louisville. It, well, we, uh, we were up uh, 12% on the new car side, uh, used car side, uh, um, it was a challenge, but uh, uh, we actually beat last year. Uh, vehicle acquisition is still the one thing that has been um, the opportunity that we face is just get acquiring vehicles yeah. um, and keeping up uh, with the uh, pace. Um, inventory, I, I, I was hoping to see in the, in the headlines where Honda landed on that because um, um, it, 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 we were really down as far as uh, deliveries, but we still were able to pull out 12% over last year. Um, but outside of pilots, ridge lines, and, uh, and passports, uh, it really, everything else uh, came in pre-sold. I mean, we're still carrying over 200 pre-solds constantly, um, which that's just our life. Yeah. And, um, uh, so, but acquiring vehicles is, is something that's very important and, and, and getting um, used cars uh, higher than where it is right now. So what, what are you doing to get people in off the street to, to, to buy the cars, to sell, to, to buy their cars well, from you? We've never really, as we've talked before, Terry, 
We never went with the market adjustment. In fact, in actuality, I'll be honest with you, we're actually talking three years, four years from now, when these people start coming out into the market and can't get out of the cars because they've been buried in a an eight to ten, uh, five to to ten thousand dollar market adjustment. How we're going to deal with those people? You know, I mean, but as we've talked about before, we strictly were. MSRP plus our protection package, uh, which we've always had, uh, like I said, like I tell people, I've been there since 2001 and that package was here before. So we, we've we just taken care of the clients. I mean, our CSI is up, our reviews are up. Um, we just take care of the clients. Now, uh, you know, our managing partner, uh, Mike, as you know, he really never stopped marketing through COVID. He never stopped marketing through the inventory situation. Um, you know, we've, we've always maintained a, a good presence on the TV, um, direct mail pieces through, uh, a direct mail company that we've been with for many years. Um, you know, we, we, he just, he just never stopped. I mean, our, our key is, uh, is to constantly put our brand out there. As you can see through social media that my social media team, I require every day, every day, seven days a week to post to constantly post just to keep our name out there so that's that's just really where we are you know and and i, I do I, I see you guys all the time and that's that's pretty consistent with the dealers that i work with that that are having success and especially dealers that have had success over a long period of time is it's 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 easy to to be a winner when everybody's winning but it, it takes it takes the right mentality to keep your foot in the gas when when everything's slowing down and, and the, the the teams that are really winning they they've got they've got their foot in the floor right now it's you know it's like a, it's just like buy, buying stocks uh, buying stock and Warren Buffett tells everyone you you don't buy until there's blood in the streets and when everyone else is selling it's it's time to be buying and when everyone else is backing off their marketing this is the time to to lay into it because you you can create such a, a bigger share because if your voice is the only voice they're hearing your voice is the only voice that matters you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been very fortunate to work with Mike um, as our as our owner, and he just he won't allow it. He just won't allow this, as you call it, stinking thinking. Yeah. He just will not allow it. It's, uh, you know, the uh, it's whatever you put on that four inch fairway is what you're going to do. And if you've got positive things in there, um, then then you're going to accomplish it. He just he just won't allow it. Yeah. Well, he's, 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 he's positivity and it ain't complicated to keep your eyes on the prize and put one foot in front of the other. You know, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to change the world every time, but you got to keep going when, when, especially when there's time to keep going. You're right. You're right. So, um, uh, and, and speaking of direct mail, one of the things I was going to mention is, is direct mail, especially for the service department. Uh, I, I mentioned the, uh, the snowmobile dealer in Canada. Uh, one thing I, I do a lot of this time of year is we start talking about tire sales and winterizing vehicles and a lot of stuff that, that maybe is not on, on the how to sell more cars in. Uh, but one thing I say is the way to sell, make sure you sell them their next car is to be the person that they trust to sell them uh, their last car and to service the car that, that, that you bought them. So keep, keep them coming in with tires and service and, and coupon, uh, coupons and whatever you're doing to, to market your, uh, your, your ROs. And, and, and keep your foot in the floor uh, for, for that as well. Looks Correct. like Baron popped in. Baron, you got anything you want to contribute today? There we go. Hey, how you doing, sir? I'm good, brother. How are you? Pretty good. No, uh, I was just uh, listening to you guys. Um, I think that's all good advice. I mean, being on social media is definitely um, an advantage to putting yourself out there in front of your customer. And especially if you're being real, they, they can connect with you and uh, kind of root for you. And, um, you know, like you said, winterizing your vehicles, giving them little tidbits on, you know, what they can do to maintain their, their vehicle currently. Uh, they'll look to you as a, a leader in the market, you know, when they are ready and um, you know, kind of trust you to help them figure things out. Yeah, well, and, and to, to, to be, uh, and that's the, one, of the, one of the things that I, I like to talk about is be a, be a factor, make the decision uh, to be a factor in, in, in their life. And that's, uh, uh, you know, that's, 
that if, if I'll leave you with an action step for fourth quarter, especially it looks like we've got as many or more salespeople than we do uh, uh, manager managers in here today, but uh, make the decision for fourth quarter to, uh, to, to be, uh, to be a factor in the, in, but even for the dealerships and general managers, if you want, if you want the customer to keep showing up in your life, make sure you're showing up in their life. And the fourth quarter gives you lots of opportunities uh, to be a factor in their life. Uh, Adam Thrasher is mentioning, uh, you know, talking to customers in the service department uh, about putting them into a new ride. And, and that I'm doing a ton of ads on this, quite honestly, because with, uh, with market, uh, market values the way they are, the, the big headline is, you know what, you are the luckiest human being on earth because that old beater you've been driving for the last however many years is probably now worth more than it's ever been before. It's probably worth more than you paid for it. It's probably, it's probably more, worth more than you owe. Uh, and you, uh, yes, cars, car sales are up, car prices are up, but you've got a, a, you know, you've got a valuable asset that's probably worth more than you think it is. So talking to those people in the service department, especially if they're face, facing some kind of bill that they can get into a vehicle, uh, that's, that's an advertising point and it's, and it's a sales point. Uh, and it's a valuable service to them because pe people just don't know, you know, not everyone knows exactly what, uh, you know, what, what's been going on in the car business like we do, because we're talking about it every single day. Yeah. So you right, got that there, but you've also got the you know the crms now a lot of them will have the equity mining tool built into them so you can have an idea when they have their appointments about what to expect and who to approach oh yeah i mean you, you you've got all the technology you know they're going to be there that always amazed me uh you know to, during during COVID, i um I, I when COVID started i was leasing a mercedes from from a mercedes dealers here in town and um and I would I, I, and I don't drive much. So I only had to take it in for service once a year, once a year, whether you need it or not, you got to take that thing in for uh, for service. And I had had the service package and all. And I would take it in. And it just amazed me uh, that I'd pull up in service and there was uh, there was no one, no one come and talk to me. You know, they, they, it, was, it was nice. They got as a matter of fact, Nick Saban owns this joint. So Nick Saban owns this joint. So it's 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 fancy as all get out. But uh, nobody ever, nobody ever came over and said, "Hey," and or just you know, made an effort to be in my life. Mark Easter said the average vehicle is around 13 years old now. That, that's exactly what I, what I did. Is I, uh, I when when COVID after COVID started and uh, I wasn't driving that much, I, I turned it in at the end of that and just started driving an old beater that I bought for my daughters in high school. So my car is actually 20 years old. The car, the car I drive mostly on a regular basis is, is uh, well, it's a 19, it's a 2021 uh, Honda CRV. Yeah. The, the, my, Adam says the technology is there. You know, people are going to be in there. Uh, I made the appointment ahead of time on their website. Uh, everybody it's not, it's not a secret. You know, you just got to get to get in there and, and get to it. All right, 656. I promise everyone that we're going to keep these short. So uh, we're going to wrap this up in just a couple minutes. I want to open it up. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Introduce yourself yeah. to the group. Yeah, Kevin Hatch here. How are you? Kevin, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Business up in Grand Rapids is good. New cars. We've got about 126 on our lot. So our inventory has been coming in steady. Um, what are you selling, Kevin? GMC and Buick. Yeah. They have lofty goals for us. Uh, of course, 150 is our goal this month for new on GMC side and 50 for Buick. So that's a pretty lofty goal considering the times with inventory. Yeah. Um, we've been doing okay. My question is, and I don't, this is to anybody, maybe uh, Mr. Bramlin in Texas there. Um, I'm, I'm wondering um, how are you guys handling the demand for the Denali Ultimate with the Super Cruise that they've advertised forever and ever. And then four months ago, they took it off because it's so hard to get. So I'm just wondering how he's handling the demand for those orders. Anybody else sell GMC that's got it? Because I assume you're still primarily in the truck business, right, Kevin? Our trucks, car, well, GM doesn't make a car anymore. So we have starting at the uh, terrain level up to the, the Yukon Denali's and the uh, and uh, that's the new one, the Denali Ultimate. But they, I'm wondering, I, there was a guy from Texas, I think, that was a GM guy. That was Clinton. Clinton, that's yeah. Me. I was wondering if Clinton had any, if he's still on, if he knew how they're handling the demand since the Super Cruise isn't available yet and probably won't be until the third quarter of next year. But they've advertised it so much on TV. I'm just wondering how that's affecting him on the orders or if people are canceling, if they're backing out. I've had a few do that. I'm just wondering how that's going. 
So if they if they put an order in, if they're waiting on this to be built and things of that nature, uh, what happens there is, I, I've got some I've got some killer sales staff and management across the street over in New Cars, and they're pretty well. Um, I don't know that we've had maybe a handful of backouts for the whole store. And basically, these people are here. Here's the thing, man. I live in a small town, North Texas. And um, our business comes from about a hundred mile radius from our store. And <clears throat> of course we get some from out of there, but you know what I'm saying? Most of it does. And so we have really thrived. We've been open since 1978 and we have really thrived on creating an atmosphere where most of our stuff is repeat and referrals. These are people that we've dealt with before. These people know us, they trust us. And so we haven't had a whole lot of pushback on that. Okay. We've, we've been getting a little pushback, but I didn't know how it was across the board. And one more question for you, Terry, is what have they decided to do with the um, all the millions of 21s and, and late and early 22 models that what happened to them? I haven't really got an answer from GM. I've kind of poked around a little bit on Global Connect to see what's going on, but did they just trash them all or, or what's going on with them what do you mean the new vehicles that were manufactured yes well they were, they were uh, well product production was was dramatically de decreased so a lot of cars didn't get trucks didn't get made and i, I know uh, um adam posted in the chat bar uh, for ford specifically he said ford's taking out heated seats and heated steering wheels because they can't get those parts they've got all these uh they've got trucks sitting on lots that are that are produced ready to go as soon yeah. as they can get whatever particular part they they need for that so they're just sitting there right now as a matter of fact i was work i worked on a blog post for a dealer yesterday uh because one of their things they're now that they're using as a, as a sales tool is that um so they they and, and they sell fords as a matter of fact so they 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 sell these ford and if there's a part that you can't specifically they were talking about gps if you can't get the the ford gps navigation system um that uh, that they're waiting on uh, they'll, they'll introduce you to the aftermarket, their aftermarkets guy who, Hey, by the way, we happen to sell a navigation system. Uh, sometimes it's made by Ford. Sometimes it's not, it's probably going to cost about the same money, maybe a little less. And we can get you your vehicle. Now, if we order a different vehicle, we can right. add the navigation system on when, when, when it gets here. And that way you can get the truck in two months instead of in eight months. Right. We're doing that too. A, a lot of ours are retrofit and they're giving them a credit on the invoice, yeah. which is, and then when as soon as we they notify us then we call the customer we go to service we get to get a hold of the, the service department and they say hey those parts we can order them now for such and such customer let them know and then they'll be in two or three days they come in they're retrofit the heated seats the heated steering wheel the ventilated seats the heated seats in the back some of those things we aren't getting we're still selling the vehicles that hasn't been a real big issue but what i'm wondering altogether is where are the thousands and hundreds of thousands of vehicles that in 21 were made and never sold or we never received because they just didn't get they're just were gone it's like yeah. covid come over yeah they just trashed them or, or, or well i mean the, I, I i don't know i don't i don't have the production numbers uh, if anyone does but i mean product uh, the, the assembly lines were closed the assembly lines were closed there was no trucks rolling off that for a long period in 20 in 2020 uh and especially uh in anything that came from overseas uh the, the yeah. trucks just were not being made so there there there's no hundreds of thousand trucks they're just gone yeah yeah well we've got lots here around lansing and flint and grand rapids at fort wayne indiana that have 30 40 50 thousand vehicles sitting waiting to be picked up for dispatch and that's another thing that's running slow is getting people just drivers to get the trucks to us yeah they're yeah. having a uh, a problem with that even so oh yeah that's a yeah. big uh that's a big reason we're not getting a lot of them well and th and there's a lot of them like i said sitting there waiting on parts so uh if anybody's got an answer for that i, sh I surely don't um 702 so I'm, I'm about to head out who's got uh, uh it's dinner time and speaking of that I got, I got fried chicken waiting on me downstairs so i'm, I'm gonna head out and get some fried chicken mark 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 got all excited jumped up where, where? <laughs> all right y'all right. be all good right. anybody got anything to add before we go Hey. Yes, sir. Michael J. Smith, Fort Wayne, at, Indiana. What's going on, brother? I'm in Fort Wayne. We got tons of GM car trucks 
from the plan here. And my understanding is that like the, the mice, the rats have eaten a bunch of wires and they just trashed uh, like uh, thousands of trucks. Trash thousands of jobs or trucks? Trucks, trucks. Yeah. They just like basically put them in the compactor. Oh, really? I've not heard that. Yeah, I was going to tell you. I don't know why I'm getting rid of it, but I'm told because we had we had them, them all over Fort Wayne, wherever there's a big field. And I, my understanding is they just, you know, destroy like tens of thousands. That's correct. That's what I have heard also. Yeah. I was going to chime in and say that I had heard the same thing. Yeah. I have not heard that. I'll, I'll, I'll dig I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that and see what I can find. And Chuck, I meant to mention to you, uh, I'm going to send you uh, some of the articles I was reading. I think there was a New York Times article. You specifically mentioned Honda uh, and specifically mentioned Honda's, uh, their inventory issues. And I got conflicting reports on whether Honda sales were up or Honda sales are down. So I'll send you. Uh, I'll, I'll send you what I had. What what I saw on that to see if it uh, it jibes with what you knew. And uh, with that, thanks a lot, Terry, for for hosting the meeting. I really appreciate it. Kevin, I appreciate you popping in. Everybody else, I appreciate you popping in. Love you all like distant cousins, and uh, and we'll see you next time. Be good. Thank you, Terry. Enjoy right. your chicken. I love you like a not so distant cousin, brother. <laughs>